Here's today's first word, daily devotion. November the 18th, we turn to Ezekiel 17 and 18. And in our passage today, we see God planting, God uprooting, and we see sprigging and sprouting. Look at Ezekiel 17 in verse 22. Thus saith the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches birds of every sort will nest. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. There's that language again. I bring low the high tree and make the high tree or the make high the low tree, dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. Now this image of a tree and the birds roosting in the branches, Jesus used this imagery as does Daniel. And so this is an important imagery of how we should understand the end times and that image is there for us to ponder. Look at verse 4 in chapter 18. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Now that's important for us to remember. The soul that sins shall die. Look at verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The Son shall not suffer for the iniquity of the Father, nor the Father suffer for the iniquity of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. But if a wicked person turns away from all his sin that he has committed, and thus keeps all my statutes and does what is just and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the transgressions that he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness that he has done, he shall live. And then listen to this language. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live? But when a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, and does the same abominations that the wicked person does, shall he live? None of the righteous deeds that he has done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which he is guilty and the sin he has committed, for them he shall die. Now let's look at verse 30 here. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgression that you have committed. Make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. Now that's an important word for us to remember. God does not delight in the death of the wicked. Instead, he has a desire. The desire is to turn to God and live. And of course, this verse already told us. The way to turn to God and live is by having a new heart. We cannot create a new heart. God has to create a heart in us. And this is the point of the reason that God says, uh, make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Well, we can't do it. And that's the reason that it's said the way that it's said. We need God to do it for us. Left to our own selves, we will die because we're wicked. We need a new heart that God provides. And remember the way that he provides is through the blood of Jesus Christ, through redemption, and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. Speaking of which, let's look at our action points today from 1 Peter. Therefore, preparing your minds for action, being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen to this language. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout your time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal way inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, 
but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb, without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth from a sincere, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. And listen to what Peter says about the word of God. For all flesh is like grass, its glory like the flower of the grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. Now, look at what Peter says here. He quotes this Old Testament passage here. This is Isaiah. He's quoting Isaiah. And then he says, this word is the good news that was preached to you. So in other words, how are we learning to read the Bible? We're learning to read the Bible in terms of fulfillment. Fulfillment happens in Jesus Christ. And so here is this wonderful truth for us that our faith is a faith according to Scripture, according to the Old Testament. And this verse tells us that the Old Testament is full of good news. Speaking of this good news, we're going to see steadfast love again in our psalm. Here we go. It's Psalm 119, our Hebrew lesson for the day. Are you ready? Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zion. Hate, Tate, Yod, and today's letter is Kaf. Kaf, and look at what we have here. This is verse 88 of Psalm 119. Are you surprised that this is here? Well, by now you shouldn't be. In your steadfast love, give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. Now notice the order. This order is important. It takes us back to Ezekiel. It rounds out what we have in Peter. It's not that we can produce our own righteousness apart from the righteousness of Christ produced in us. We cannot create in ourselves a clean heart. We are dependent upon God to do it. Listen again to the way this verse reads in Psalm 119. In your steadfast love give me life, that I may keep the testimonies of your mouth. We have hope only because God gives us hope. And remember... With him, every hope is ours. He is a God of steadfast love.